Hello, welcome in my workshop. I want to do a demo for you about coring, bowl coring. When Phil Irons asked me to do a demo for this world feed, I thought, oh my, what shall I do? Because I don't have a signature piece or something like that that I can show you. But we have just built the Mastodon. So I thought maybe it's a good idea to show you the Mastodon in detail. Normally it is outside my workshop, but it's January and it's cold. So I have heating in my workshop. Uh, it's a better idea to, to get the Mastodon in than to get me out. So here it is, the Mastodon. I will tell you all about later. Um, in my workshop there's several lathes. Um, I do courses over here. And if I don't do courses, I work here. I hate to say it, but I have to work here. <laughs> um, that for instance is what we normally do. Here we have um, funeral urns. This, these are in, in production now. We make them in three sizes, in two wood species. And there are um, finished in lacquer with a glance on it. Or natural, like this. Or you have an oil finish. And we make quite a lot of them. So. That's what we normally do, and that's where, well, that pays my, for my bread. Um, but I, like I said, I want to tell you about coring. Uh, I need a lot of bowls, pre-dried bowls, because I also do bowl turning courses. And if there are six people in uh, this course, then at least I need 18 bowls. So if I do a two-day course every month, well you can imagine that I need quite a lot of uh, pre-dried and pre-turned bowls. And that's why I wanted to build the Mastodon. Before I had the Mastodon, I cored my bowls on this machine um, and with this coring system. Uh, it's a one-way lathe and it's a one-way coring system. Uh, it's a huge difference with what we have now. Um, in this system I first shaped the outside of the bowl, then turned it around and then this knife went into the wood and then they had a bowl. But using this means that I always first have to do the outside of the bowl. And I do that with a bowl gouge. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but I thought, well, from the minute actually I had this system, I thought, why not build a knife over here and go in from the other side so that I don't have to do the outside of the bowl with a bowl gouge. Thinking, 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 well, years passed by, I got older, um, and thinking, bah, forget about it. But then on a certain moment I was, um, uh, well, it never went completely out of my head, and then uh, every now and then I do demos together with Jan Hovens and we're in a car for several hours driving uh, to a demo. And on these occasions we every now and then we drink a beer or a wine. And on these days you talk about your plans. Well, I told him about this. And he said, um, well, let me build that for you. That's, that's, I must say, that is the short version. 
um, because in, in reality the conversation took much more time. Years! It took years, yes. But now it is here and I'm very happy with the machine. So let me tell you about how and why of this machine. The Mastodon is basically nothing more and less than a huge spindle with a block of wood, big lump of wood on the front and a knife over here that I just push into the wood. Building that was, building that very simple machine wasn't that easy as I thought it would be. Of course first it started with, we, we needed a very stable, heavy platform. Something that could to carry the machine and this of course <laughs> this of course is not stable yet so therefore it has three feet and one adjustable over here and now we have a stable machine this whole thing, um, I always say, we built it um, as Jan Hovens and I built it, but there's a matter of fact that Jan just built it. I was just there to say, oh, you're doing a good job, Jan. Um, so he welded it all together and um, did much of the thinking because I started um, with the idea that we could move this pivot the pivot this pivot I thought well I wanted to have it here and here and here so we can make several sizes different sizes of bowls like in the one-way system for instance I can move the whole the whole base plate so I can make uh, more, a, 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 a bowl more shallow or a wider bowl that is not so deep. But in this case, if we moved the pivot, which we actually did um, build it like that, then of course if I take a knife, I will put a knife in there. Here's a knife. This is the shape of knife that we ended up with. There's a radius over here and the same radius is over here. So the issue was that let me just lock this for a minute. So the issue was that if this radius goes in, uh, this radius has to follow. So if we move the pivot next to the spindle, well, the whole thing locks, of course. Well, of course, it took some time before we realized that, before I realized that. Anyway, um, Let's go into, uh, shall we, let, shall I first core a block of yeah. wood? Yeah? Yep. Okay. Cool. And then we'll call in Jan, because he knows everything about the machine. Let's do a small one. This is a piece of birch. Um, that we will core. I can, I have, this is the biggest knife over here. It cuts a radius of 48 centimeters. That is, uh, oh, how many inches is that? About 20, uh, no, about 19. Just under 20, inch, 20 inches. Um, so that of course is way too big for this uh, block of wood. Here we have a screw and this screw has a diameter of 30 mils and between the threads there is 
23, 24 millimeters. So I have a forced a bit here that is 25. So let me find out where the middle of this block is. That's the middle. Oh, I think I have enough here. There should the lock be. The screw is 36 mils, so the hole at least has got to be 36 mils. Well, that is 36, but let me just to be sure. Make it a little bit deeper. That should you be, do the job. Well, this knife, of course, is way too big, so let me get that out of the way. Actually, this is more or less the only thing that I built myself. <laughs> it's the case where the knives go in. And to be honest, I made it a little bit too big, because I can't open, I have to... Oh, okay. <laughs> you did a great job. You're a bad liar, Lise. <laughs> By the way, Lise, of course, is doing camera again. My cam girl. <laughs> this is the number two knife and I can cut a bowl with it that is uh, 28 centimeters and this block is just under 28 so that, that'll work out fine. The knife system is I have to say brilliant. Um, there's an angle on this plate, so go in there and stay there. I lift it up and lock it with these, these two screws. Next thing to do is get the block on the lathe. I have a on and off button of course. Um, I will spin it slowly and then push the block of wood against it so that it, the screw will eat itself into the, into the hole. There's a big motor, it's a f I think a 4 kilowatt motor and here we have a uh, Inverter. This inverter, well, it, 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 something I'm working on uh, still now. You're looking at a recording now um, because I'm teaching. When when you are looking at this recording, I will be teaching here in this same uh, place. And actually, I wanted to replace this inverter for a heavier one. But that has not yet happened yet, so unfortunately. Problem is, if the blocks are really big, um, the inverter switches off too early. The motor can handle more than the inverter will let him. Anyway, forget about it.
Oh, it's like this part. <laughs> Here you see that this block is very unbalanced. Imagine that I start now with this block of wood. Imagine that I sh would have done it on, uh, with the one-way coring system, which, by the way, is a very good system. But uh, I always have to take this block of wood to the bandsaw and then do the outside of the bowl with the bowl gouge. So this goes much easier. Well, there we go. Let's just core this thing out. Bit of dust. There we go. now that I do it slowly in the end normally we're outside and there's no people in the line of fire so to say and I would do this a bit more speeding up, up speed it um, but I do also don't want this piece to go through the window of my workshop so let me do this let me do this slowly for a moment So that's one little bowl we got out of there. The knives, it's maybe interesting to, well this might be a good moment to ask, that's my face mask. This might be a good moment to ask Jan in and tell us all about why we, we choose this knife and um, why we, uh, well, let's say how we build it. Go on in, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Jan Ovens. He is also <laughs> the one who uh, thought about calling this machine the Mastodon. And don't ask me why. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> why, Jan? I can't explain that. It just came up in me and, uh, well, I think that was a fitting name. That's it. There's no other reason behind it. <laughs> I think it's a great name. Thank you. <laughs> First, the cutter, Jan. Um, yeah. Can you? There's in, in over here. There's more cutters. <laughs> yeah. And over here in this in this locker is also my reading glasses. Because if I have to work with these cutters. I can't see them anymore. So, um, 
these uh, cutters we use, and they're very small. They're for, for aluminium, right? Yes, they come from the metal working um, world uh, where they were used on lathes and even on mills. And these ones are designed for cutting aluminium or aluminum, depending on which part of the world you live. <laughs> and these are the smallest ones we have. Um, if you want to know the exact code, it's CCGT06. Yes, CC I just wanted to say that. Um, and they're interchangeable. You can turn them around, you can use them on both sides. It's not my idea. I saw this on uh, internet, as most of my ideas I see on internet. Um, but we built the cutter around these interchangeable inserts. And it was, I take it back, right? Yes. Um, and that was quite a how to position it exactly was yes. quite a thing because of course it has got to it is it is cut to cut on the center height exactly exactly because in the end over here it's got to be in the center because if it's above or beyond um, well there's wood left in the middle and the rest of the piece won't fall off um, the other thing is the other biggest big problem was to reduce the amount of vibration like i said before first i wanted to have a pivot point over here and several pivot points next uh, to this central pivot point um, but that of course uh, wasn't we weren't able to realize that well we should have yeah <laughs> School is too long ago. Um, but it took some time to build this machine, so uh, and now it's finished. So it, we're not going to try that again. But one of the problems we had uh, was vibration, um, and that's why there now is a long spindle with Delrin bearings. Delrin bearings, yes and an axial ball bearing on the bottom. And now it is quite, well, you could see that, it's quite steady when it goes in. One thing that is very important also is the knife, which is, uh, several people asked me already, what kind of steel is it? Because it's, it, there's big powers coming on, um, uh, it's, it's got to deal with big powers, uh, but it's normal C45. We call no, it no, no, this, uh, this, this steel is uh, normal construction steel. In Europe, we call that uh, uh, ISO 235. It's the cheapest steel you can have. There's nothing special uh, uh, about it. We're Dutch, the cheapest steel we have. Yes, well. <laughs> and it's got to follow exactly the cutter because if it runs out of the radius well then it will get stuck in the wood immediately what else can we tell you uh, the weight of the machine perhaps oh the weight yes Jan how much is the weight of the machine roughly 300 and ki 300 kilos roughly I don't know precisely Okay, that's not as well. We tried to. I, I, I brought it in here in the workshop with a forklift, and then Lise said, Well, well Lise, is, Lise is from film and TV. It's got to move 10 centimeters to the left, or maybe eight. <laughs> so we tried to do that by hand, but it was impossible. <laughs> so that was the first time that Lise didn't get what she wanted. <laughs> Maybe I should do the other yeah. uh, bowl, get this thing out. You get the, the smallest knife. Oh, yeah.
There we go again. Full speed now, because it is a... Ah, my face shield. Full speed now, because it is a very uh, small block of wood. Face, oh, face shield works the best when it's down. Just to, you see me going in very uh, slowly now, the, because the wall is is very uneven. If I if I go in, uh, just bonk like that, uh, it will for sure give me a sort of a catch. So I go in very slowly, especially in the beginning. there we have already a small bowl that we now can put it in a carton box and uh, put it away for drying. What I by the way normally would do is this is the this is the end grain part. I would dip it in a hot paraffin to prevent it from drying too quick and um, and tearing for because of the quick drying. Now we come to the part that needs a little bit more engineering. Because this block of wood is uh, of course now very 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 tight to the faceplate like my face shield is to the head. Um, and, and getting this off by hand is impossible. So I thought, in engineering this machine, let the motor turn the other way around, the other way around, and a hook that grabs into the wood and it will unscrew itself easily. But that's not possible, it takes too much force from, uh, from the motor. So we have to do that manual. Manual we can do it by two in two ways. I can here go to the end grain part and split it with a chisel. But um, we can also do it an, in a different way and keeping this last little bowl the way it is. This is a huge Hook key? Is it called a hook key? Hook spanner. Hook spanner. And I can... So, now that I use it to uh, lock the spindle. That's my favorite tool. Uh, yeah, I thought so already. <laughs> uh, this is, um, well, well, as you hear, Lee's head is already making all kinds of fantasies with this. It's um, like the dark ages. <laughs> but it's also a sort of a spanner. Let me first get the knife off. So the spindle is locked, 
And now I can make a huge force on the wood. And you can hear the wood cracking. Uh, not cracking, but... Now it will work by hand. And this is the last piece. If you have a small lathe and it is dry, I put them all with ten in a in a in a box and then put them on the website. And there's they're always sold out, so there's lots of people wanting to have these. Um, well, what else should I tell you about the master Jan? What else should I tell them about the master? Well. You have to tell them, I think, uh, that we didn't design this from the base on. This is heavily inspired by... Oh, yeah. The Holland Ball Mill on YouTube. On YouTube, but yep. also by the Alaskan Ball Mill on YouTube. And there's another one, I've forgotten the name. All these three mills inspired us to build this in a way it is now standing here. And it's not an exact copy. We changed several things. Um, also to make it easier on ourselves. Yes, because if you, if you look at the Holland, sorry, if I yeah. may interrupt, if you look at the Holland Bowl Mill, there's a great picture, I, a, a little video. It's made by it. How are how things are made or something like that? It's five minutes, but filmed by the BBC. If you look at that and you see the Holland Bowl Mill in action, you see where well, we have these these um, carbide cutters. They use an HHS knife. Um, that is razor sharp and has an opening. The shavings go right through the knife. Um, uh, in our system, the shavings go on the knife and bounce back, which yeah. gives, of course, more uh, vibration. But it also means that this Holland mole, uh, bowl mill, mole bill, Holland bowl mill needs uh, much more maintenance than this system. That a great advantage is that our cutters are sharp. You can use them quite a lot because they are very, uh, uh, they stay sharp very long. And if they are getting dull, you change them for another one, and they don't cost well, very first much I money. Turn them around. Yes, you can turn them around. <laughs> use the bag, and then you throw them away and buy yes. a new one. But they are very yep. cheap, relatively cheap. And also, the Holland Ball Mill has a. a we go into uh, the wood. But on, on the Holland Bowl Mill, there's also an arm over here that uh, makes a fine cut on the outside of the, of the bowl that is still on the lathe. Um, well, we thought about making that one, but enough is enough. No, you don't so, need it. You, you need a rough drawn bowl, and that's the, and all. Yeah, that is also uh, through, uh, through. Uh, we don't need it. I, I want a lot of bowls to be rough dried so we can use them in courses and so on. I don't need finished pieces. Yeah, well, all we can say is thank you, Bull, Holland Bull Mill. Thank you, Alaska, yeah. for the inspiration. <laughs> um, yes. But this is our result and it's our way of coring bowls. And I think it works also. Shall I do another one? Yes. Okay. Do another one. Um, okay. This thing. Here we have a piece of walnut. I didn't cut this piece myself, otherwise I would have done it different. Uh, 35 centimeters means just over 17. And the middle over here. 23, 23, so that's more or less the middle.
Are you laughing, Lise? No, 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 absolutely not. Let me get the knife. Well, it is walnut, but I definitely want it to be the brown part more like this. But, hey, it's wood. Change the knife. Maybe you thought... Maybe you thought... Uh, not going that fast. I was I was not speeding. Uh, which one should I take? I was not really speeding because I did not. Because we are broadcasting over the whole world now. I didn't want to have a catch. And as you can see, Lise was standing in the flying zone of the. So I thought, well, let's do this slowly. That's really nice of you. Yeah. I 
I hated the idea of you being slammed against the wall with a block of wood against your forehead. <laughs> yes, that would be awkward, right? Yeah, I'm a nice guy. Last knife. Look, that's a nice one. Yeah. Sapwood and uh Great. take the knife off. It's the second time this happens. And the last one. And that's a nice set of bowls, I'd say. For if you're really greedy, you could also make another one from this part. Yeah. But I think it's got to be... A nice planter. Yeah, <laughs> nice planter, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, this is the Mastodon. Thanks to Jan. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. I hope to see you in a few minutes in the Q&A.
Bye. Bye. <laughs>